Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video, we're gonna go over a couple different things, and most importantly, we're gonna go over the four stages of life cycles for shrimp. And this is for all higher order shrimp, so caradina, neocaradina, uh, you know, crystal shrimp, cherry shrimp, blue dreams, you name it. Any of the common shrimp in the hobby other than a mono shrimp, uh, babalti shrimp are this way, but a mono shrimp, they give birth to larvae that they hatch from eggs and they let the eggs go and they float downstream and then they swim back. Well, all these shrimp here are called higher order shrimp and we're gonna show you each stage of the life cycle and how to identify them and a couple other tidbits about their life cycle that I think will be really helpful. Uh, this is a remake of my most popular video in which I didn't really address the question well. So in this tank, I happen to be lucky and have parameters that, that uh, meet the requirements. You can see we've got lots of little baby shrimp that'll come in and out of picture. And you'll also see little critters like these little white bugs on the glass. Now those are called seed shrimp. They're not a problem whatsoever. If we see any other pests, I'll be sure to tell you. Now here is gonna be a pregnant shrimp, and this is called a cheetah shrimp. She's a caradina shrimp, uh, a caradina serrata most likely, but we don't know for sure. They're, they're very new to the hobby. And she's got eggs under there, and she's using her little swimmer legs to hold the eggs, but also to rotate them so they don't get fungi or any problems going on. So I want you to take a look first at an old shrimp while she's sitting here. This is a shrimp that hasn't shed her exoskeleton in a while. You can see she's blotchy, and the way we can tell she's a female is that she's got basically armor that hangs down. You see where the, the lighter uh, red, the kind of uh, off-white, kind of pinkish red is? Well, in males, that's kind of the contour line of their whole body, whereas she's got that extra bright cherry red armor that hangs down, and we call that her skirt. And... Uh, under there is where the eggs will be. Well, she's kind of that that um, that off red color, kind of dingy looking, rather than shiny like these shrimp. You'll actually see they have almost like a opal or or bluing color to them when they've recently shed, and uh, that means that they've lost their exoskeleton recently, and they're growing larger or they're about to have babies again. So. When they do shed, it's important, sorry about that for shaking the camera. When they do shed, it's important to leave the sheds in the tank so they can consume those sheds and then grow bigger by eating them. So what we're looking at here, this could be a, a young female or a young male. It's hard to tell right now. And here comes a serrata. Um, this is called a tiger uh, or, or rather a raccoon tiger shrimp by some people or just a raccoon caradina by others and you can see she has babies underneath her belly and the eggs will often turn colors the colors really don't indicate much of anything um, they're just kind of random like eye color and here comes a red really this is a neocaradina shrimp that's also carrying a few eggs. Now this one, this is why we're filming today, is we've got some that have shed and some that are holding only a couple babies. So this one, she's still holding one or two eggs up all the way front, and you can see her back swimmers swim, but her front swimmers under her belly or under her skirt aren't swimming. They're holding on to those eggs. And the reason they need to hold on to those eggs is they need to constantly clean them with those swimmerettes. The mother shrimp is constantly juggling the, shri the shrimp eggs, moving them and making sure that they're not getting fungus and that no sorts of parasites are coming on and attacking them. The other thing is when you see a shrimp folding kind of like that at the tail, if it folds much more than what you're seeing, and also the, the nose and mouth that you can see her moving a moment ago, that's called her rostrum. Her nose is her rostrum. Uh, if you see, see she's got an egg that's hanging really low and she's trying to juggle that back up and she's gonna hold on to it. Now, oftentimes they have kind of like a sticky little webbing that they'll use to hold it in there. So they're not just holding it completely with friction or, or gra you know, gravity won't just make them totally lose it. 
but sometimes they'll have so many eggs that they're overflowing. So I just wanted to show you guys that that is something that happens and it's a good way to tell that the eggs are all healthy and everything is that she's juggling them. If they're unhealthy, she'll literally toss them off. So if you see a female uh, grabbing the eggs and juggling them and dropping a few of them, don't worry, that means that those eggs were probably bad anyways. Now if she gets really stressed, if you move a, a female just after she gets her eggs, uh, just after she gets fertilized by the male or whatnot, she may um, she may drop her eggs if the water parameters have changed a whole bunch. And so it's important to hopefully not move them too much and to provide them hiding places when they are pregnant and holding those eggs. So the next thing I want to show you is right before she becomes buried is what we call it when they're holding those eggs. Check out these two little uh, oval shaped lobes on either side of, well, I'd say it's a spine, but it, it's kind of an exoskeleton attached spine. But it's, it's kind of a heart shape or uh, sometimes they're just two lobes, two kind of ovals. And those are called saddles. That's the saddle on the shrimp. And first you'll see a female saddle up like this one. And then for about three to four weeks, she'll grow and you'll see just like this one the color get dingier and her shell get a little bit loose usually you'll see clear margins on the tail so the the tail fin will start to look like it's got a foggy layer on it and her her nose may look like that her antennas and legs may look like that and what she's doing right here is she's getting ready to fold in half and get rid of that now she's going to lose that entire uh she's gonna fold in half and lose that entire exoskeleton and underneath it will she will be completely ready with her new exoskeleton so this is exactly what she's doing right now is getting ready to break free of this this exoskeleton and uh once she does you can actually kind of see all the little teeny circles that are eggs and they're growing slowly in her but they're going to need more room if they're going to successfully uh, grow to little miniature versions of her on her belly. And so before she's reached that stage, she would look like this after a recent molt. See, uh, the females have that big uh, shoulder joint or right by their eye, you could call it their head. They've got that big joint there. And then they've got the skirt that hangs down past their swimmerettes, whereas the males, you can usually see the swimmerettes a lot easier, which are all those back little legs rather than the ones they stand on. Uh, so this could be a male here. The males are a lot more streamlined. And then if you can't see through them, their saddle can be lots of different colors. But in this one, you can actually see they look like tiny little yellow balls. Um, and what she's going to do is she's going to fold in half. And this is why I left these uh, shedded uh, shrimp uh, exoskeletons in here, even though this one's eating them. She's got her eggs already starting in her head, so I know it's a female. I see yellow. And so that's actually her eggs starting. And when they get big enough, they'll grow and they'll fit down here by her shoulder, and you'll start to see them. Now, if it's a really opaque or high-grade shrimp that you can't see through you may not be able to tell when they are when they have their saddle and are ready for the male shrimp to get them uh, pregnant but here we've got the exoskeletons and if you look carefully you can see they always escape through the same little trick see that piece she's or she's chewing on there that's that head shoulder piece there that's detached from the other exoskeleton that they're uh, munching on uh, back over there. Now, this is a whole other exoskeleton, and you can actually still see it. It's still all in one piece, and if I nudge it carefully, you can actually see where she folded in half and hopped out of there. And that's where that shiny one came from earlier today, was she folded in half and hopped out of her exoskeleton. Now, this is why they need KH, GH, or total dissolved solids of certain numbers is because, see that hatch that's open? That's how they get out. Sometimes that will get stuck if they don't have enough 
uh, nutrients to produce the chitin that it makes up that protective layer. And then they're in trouble and sometimes they'll die. So you want to make sure that you look up what each species of shrimp needs, water parameters wise. Here's another exoskeleton. They've all shed recently because I did a water change and sometimes that spurs it on. But when they've shed, they're going to turn that bright, bright, glossy, the best they look is right after they've shed. And so they're going to shed when they first get eggs in their uh, over oviducts up in their head before you can even see them. They'll shed then. Then three to four weeks later, those will develop into a saddle that you can see that's either yellow, green, black, white. It, it, it depends on the shrimp. And that doesn't mean anything about the babies. It's Like I said, it's just like eye color or something else like hair color in humans. It doesn't really determine too much. And then after she gets this saddle, she'll shed one more time and then she's ready to do her home stretch and to become what we call buried, like this one, where the skirt actually comes down a bit, the armor on the side, and they need to have the energy to constantly juggle and constantly juggle and then they'll give birth and then they'll shed one more time and then they'll start, if, if they're healthy, they'll start growing another saddle even before they've dropped these. But generally, they'll wait till they drop the eggs, which you can see has little balls there. And they'll drop the eggs, and they'll start growing another saddle, and it repeats. Now, when a shrimp is little, it needs to go through exoskeletons. These little baby ones go through exoskeletons like crazy. They're shedding their exoskeletons all the time. Uh, once a week when they're really young, and then... Uh, more like once every two weeks and then once a month when they're full grown. And so sometimes they'll get new patterns. This is called the cheetah caradina shrimp here. And this one is probably a male. We don't, uh, I've never seen any, um, any of the saddle or any of the berries on this one. The, the head piece is not that big re in respect to the rest of the body. And there isn't a long, what we call skirt, like I showed you guys, that hangs down to protect the eggs. Whereas on these other ones, you can see that skirt hangs down, and it's a piece of armor that, that protects her eggs. So that's really the rundown on shrimp reproduction. And the other thing is, this one here, you can see now, this is like the other one that, that, is, that is holding eggs back here in that there is a saddle up in that head that's a little hard to see that's developing. I can see yellow though, and it's developing a saddle, so it'll probably, uh, it'll probably be another week or two, then it will start folding in half all the time, and then it will actually pass those eggs down through these little tubes that go down either side of the shrimp, so like this one here. These eggs will go down the side of the shrimp through oviduct tubes, and then they meet up into one little spot, which is where also uh, the shrimp uh, things come and go for using the restroom. And uh, then in that spot, the males will get super, super active. They can smell when the females have just sh shed and they're ready to take on a new mate. And the males will go really crazy and they'll swim all over the tank, up and down, especially at night. And then what they'll do is they'll try to pass off by showing how nice they look. They'll try to pass off after she's uh, recently shed and she's all shiny and pretty. See, she's still a little dull. So she, she's got a little bit longer probably to go and then she'll be ready. And they'll, they'll hand that off to her. Now, when they've recently shed, it takes them about five days, sometimes longer, sometimes a week and a half, a week. It just depends on the species and the age of the shrimp for that exoskeleton to fully harden. And once it's fully hardened, then they'll come out of hiding. But oftentimes you wanna give them good hiding spots like stone or plants or whatnot to hide, but they still need to be able to graze during this period because like I said, they're growing to fit that armored uh, skeleton. So that is the rundown on the four stages of shrimp pregnancy. So there's the stage where we don't really know what's going on. Could be male or female. You can guess by the size of the skirting that hangs down. This looks like a male. But then again, the head could be a female because that's a pretty big joint there compared to the rest of the body. So it could be just a young female or a male. 
Then it goes to the buried stage that you can barely see that's in the head. Sometimes shining a light through, you can see it. And then you go to the stage where you can see the berries. They can be any color. Again, don't worry whatever color they are. And if it's a translucent shrimp, you'll see them really easily, and you'll actually be able to see that they're round little eggs. And if it's a semi-translucent shrimp, like these tangerine tigers, you'll just see a dark spot. But if it's a totally opaque shrimp, like a high-grade painted fire cherry like this gal, then you won't be able to tell necessarily. It'll be hard to know when she's ready to spawn. Um, and so then they will pass the eggs down the oviduct tubes after another three to four weeks. A male will do the dance. This is a male here swimming around. He's nice and shiny. He must have just shed. And he's nearing his adulthood. And then they will uh, be able to reproduce. They'll, they'll hand off a little packet of DNA, of the male half of the DNA, and it's shaped like a donut, and the females will meticulously clean their swimmerettes underneath there, and then they will start, their body will pass those eggs, and they'll have to pass through the donut. So if a female has eggs on her belly, if she's buried, as we call it, like the one over here is, um, she's got the swimmerettes holding the eggs, or like uh, this one here where you can see the swimmerettes are holding eggs, you can see them cleaning the eggs, even if you can't see the eggs that well. Uh, and usually you can see the eggs pretty well on a fully uh, pregnant shrimp, but this, these ones are a little harder sometimes. You know that they're fertile. Now, if the shrimp dies, you can take those and put them in what we call an egg tumbler and take care of it. But uh, other than that, that's all you guys need to know about the life cycles of higher order shrimp, which are the common ones in the hobby. And uh, I hope this was helpful, you guys. I have a ton of other info on shrimp from their genetics and genealogy and uh, where they're from in the wild and how we got the color mixes to how to care for them, how to set up a tank, to brand new research that I'm always adding uh, whenever a new line or species is found. Um, right here, these blue ones back here are actually called Stardust Caradina, and they are a new variety that we're not sure about. And same with these... Uh, cheetahs. They're probably a Serrata Caradina, but we don't know for sure. But they're sure pretty. So I wanted to share all this with you guys and show you guys all this on a day when everybody was showing off and uh, able to uh, clearly show what, what's happening. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you next time. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd sure appreciate it. If you hit that like button and if you shared it to anybody that this is helpful for and uh, also if you want to subscribe I'd love that as well so uh, please feel free to join me on the live streams and I can help answer questions or drop a comment and I'm checking all the time to help answer questions I'll talk to you guys later that's all you needed to know about shrimp life cycles talk to you guys later bye